طيب uh, let's wait for few seconds then we can go ahead and start. طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, Welcome to the third lecture of EE 201 uh, So in today's lecture we're going to continue talking about or uh, going to continue solving problems on power Then we'll start the second chapter, uh, chapter 2 which is one of the fundamental chapters in this uh, course So just going over what we've covered in the previous lecture we defined current voltage and power and we stated that the current is the rate of change in the uh, charge flow. And the voltage is, or sometimes called the potential difference, is the, um, the derivative or the rate of change uh, or, in, or the expanding rate uh, or absorbing rate of uh, energy per unit charge. And finally, we define power as the rate of change in the energy or uh, simply the multiplication of the voltage by the current. Uh, from the previous lecture, we saw that if uh, the power is positive, it means that the element is actually uh, is absorbing or dissipating power. If the power is negative, it means that the element is actually generating power. So as an example for an element that's always dissipating power is the resistor, which is um, a component that we're going to study inshallah in today's lecture. Uh, sources, however, they can, they can do both. They can absorb or deliver uh, power. So if the power associated with the source is negative, it means that the source is delivering power. If it's positive, it means that the source is uh, actually the source is uh, dissipating power, and that's what we covered in the previous lecture. And if you recall, we uh, we discussed also the passive sign convention and how uh, how how can we use this uh, notion of the passive sign convention to define to differentiate between. Uh, or to determine the sign of the uh, power. So let's continue doing uh, solving a few exercises on power. Uh, again, this is an important concept, so that's why we're taking more than uh, uh, we're taking more time on that. We're spending more time on it. So in this exercise, uh, it's much simpler than the previous one, the one we've covered in the previous uh, lecture. Uh, it states that the voltage and the current at the terminals of the circuit element, we have a circuit element here. We don't know what type of circuit element that we have, but we can assume that it's, it's a circuit element with two terminals, ideal basic circuit element. Uh, the, it says that for T less than zero, the voltage and the current are zeros. And for t greater than or equals to zero, they are given by uh, these two formulas. So what we want to do, we want to, or we're asked to do is we ask to find the time when the power delivered to the circuit element is maximum. This is the first thing that we need to do. Then we need to find the maximum uh, value of the power. So the first part is asking us to find the time when the power is maximum. And the second one is asking us to find uh, the maximum value of the power. And the last one is uh, the total energy associated with the elements. So questions or participation? Abdel Hassan Al Abdullah. Uh, we take the derivative of both uh, equations and solve for t, then we have the maximum time. Find the time. Oh, okay. You can't uh, solve the problem. Okay, good. Uh, yes. uh, Sorry. Oh no. Okay. Uh, so this is partially correct. No, it's not fully correct. Uh, Hadi, uh, let's start with the first one. Uh, uh, but by using the formula for the power, uh, we can use the optimization from math 101 uh, and the differentiate it and put it equal to zero to find the time. Which is 
where which is the, the maximum. Exactly, exactly. That's what we're going to do. So let's start with uh, first finding the power, the expression for the power. So power is the voltage multiplied by the current. So if we do that, uh, P equals to V multiplied by I. So V is 80,000 T minus 500 T multiplied by I, which is 15 T e to the power negative 500 T. Uh, okay, so if I take the product, it's something like this, T squared. And the unit is what? Uh, I'd rather like simplify the, uh, the expressions here. So I will assume that uh, this big number, uh, 1,200,000 is equal to A, T squared, and 1,000 is equal to B. Okay, so to find the maximum bar, uh, like Hadi said, like what Hadi said, is actually we need to differentiate this and equate it to, equate it to zero. So if we differentiate this with respect to time, equate it to zero, we will end up with 2a t minus a b t square, and uh, all of this is equal to zero. So there's some calculation here. So A is cancelled. T will go with T square with the square. This will be cancelled and you will end up with TB, TP by DT equals to. So T will be Two divided by B, which is two divided by one thousand, which is two milliseconds. Is uh, that question? Ibrahim, question. Shaib. Ah, okay. Bye. Okay. Uh, yes. الاثنين تقسيم الالف هم يساوي واحد على خمسمية لا واحد على خمسمية كم واحد على خمسمية is one point zero zero two اه اوكي طيب اه Okay, so well, the second part is asking us to find the maximum value of the bar. So I believe this one is much easier than the previous one. And, uh, Salman? Yes, uh, we can substitute by uh, two milliseconds in the equation for the power. Okay, good. So all what we need to do is a direct substitution. And this will solve the problem. This will solve the problem. The result is six four nine point six milliwatts. Okay, very good. Uh, so let's go back to uh, the the problem statement. Uh, 
the third part is asking us to find the total energy delivered to the circuit element. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, uh, we can integrate uh, the power equation with respect to time and then yes. take the limits from zero to infinity because you want the total. Uh, exactly. Or we can integrate the... Uh, what, what you said is, is, is exactly correct. Or we can actually integrate it from zero to infinity directly. Yeah. Very good. So uh, we have the expression for the power, so we can integrate it with respect to time. And the, uh, we have a definite integral, so the limits for the integral is zero and infinity. Let me make sure about I have a section here. OK. So integrate it from zero to infinity, a t squared dt and the way to to do this integral there are multiple ways you can integrate it by parts but i don't like integrating uh, by part i'm trying to i i usually try to avoid it so i use the uh, the table method to to do that so in this case i have the product of t squared e of our uh, negative pt. So I differentiate this one and differentiate it again until I reach zero. And I'm taking the anti derivative of the exponent. So I believe you are familiar with this technique, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. I think it's called Tablon method or something. Tablon method, yes. Okay, so. I'm just writing down the. Because I think your book was not, um, did not use this technique. So if I uh, run the integral from zero to infinity, uh, I have exponent and uh, uh, polynomial. The exponent will reach infinity much faster than polynomial. Uh, so the uh, exponent, I'm sorry, the exponent will reach zero much faster than the uh, the the uh, much faster than the polynomial reach infinity. So uh, everything will be zero. Uh, except uh, the last term solved at t equals to zero. So the result will be 2a divided by P b3, which is 2,200,000 divided by 1,000 to the bar 3, and the result is 2.4 milliliter. Okay, this is the energy uh, delivered. Uh, this is the energy uh, delivered to the circuit element. From t equals to zero to t equals to infinity. Yes, Adela. Yes, Doctor. Uh, I think you forgot a negative sign. Or am I mistaken? Where? Uh, there's, there should be no negative sign. When you substituted uh, by zero. Uh, yeah. Because there's a negative minus a negative, which is positive. Which negative? Which negative cancels this negative? Uh, because first you need to solve it at infinity, right? Uh, there will be zero. I mean, first you need to solve it at infinity, right? Ah, uh, yes, then uh, subtract this. Uh. Yes, okay. Okay, very good. 
So let's move on to the second exercise uh, that we need, a second and last exercise that we're going to solve in power. And in this exercise, uh, we are given, instead of given the expression for the uh, current and voltage, we are given the, the plot for the current and the voltage, and we are asked to find uh, the power. And first of all, we're asked to sketch the bar versus time uh, from t equals to zero to t equal uh, to equals to eight, um, 80 milliseconds. Then we're asked to calculate the energy at specific time constants. So if you read, if you go over your textbook, you see that sometimes your textbook is actually trying to uh, find the equation for every portion of the line. For example, uh, it will, uh, your textbook will find the equation uh, of this line, then the equation of that line, then the equation of that line, etc. Until uh, it's actually fine, until it finds the uh, until it finds the expression for the power. Then uh, use this expression to generate the plot. Well. This is a correct way, but this is not a, uh, a fast. This is not the fastest way. So the fastest way is actually to directly substitute. Uh, who can help me with uh, with actually generating the plots? So let's do it from T. Okay, no, nobody wants to participate. Uh, there should be 70 here. 80. Uh, Ziad? Yes. Yes, OK, Ziad. Let's uh, start with what happens. So we need to divide it into sub intervals. So from 0 to 10, uh, what will be the maximum value of the uh, power? The maximum value will be. Can I use a calculator? Uh, you can use a calculator. I can just state what what will be the maximum. How how you find it using the calculator? Uh, multiplying the maximum values. At yes. 10. Okay, so it's going to be eight multiplied by two fifty milli, which is four in this case. So the plot will look uh, exactly the same. It is uh, as, two, I think. As this one, uh, yes, it should be two. Yes, two. Is it two or point two five? So eight divided by four. Okay, yes, two. Uh, okay, so it's going to be exactly the same as this one. But is scaled by uh, by a factor of eight. So this is two. I don't know why I wrote it eight. Uh, why I wrote it four. In this case, it's going to be zero to two. Okay, very good. Now. Uh, let's continue this this plot. So let's go to the second interval, which is from uh, 10 to 30. Uh, Omar? Uh, yes, we're going to multiply uh, the lowest, which is minus 250. Okay, minus 250 by uh, 8, which is going to run from 
uh, 2 to negative 2. So it's going to be something like, well, the first thing is actually you will see that there will be the sign will flip. So at t equals to 10, the voltage will change the polarity from positive to negative. So this will cause uh, this abrupt change here. Then everything will be uh, will be actually the negative of the uh, of the current here. Okay, very good. Mohanad. Uh, sorry, Doctor, what did you, from 20 to 30, what did you make it from 0 to 2? Shouldn't it be a straight line on the y, on the x-axis? It all will, will be zeros. Ah, sorry, 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 it's from 30 to 40, sorry, 30 to 40. From 30 to 40, okay, sorry. we have this one. Okay, yes, since you are from 30 to 40, how, how does it look like? It will be a straight line on the x-axis, zeros. Yes, exactly. So that's how it's going to look like from uh, zero to uh, okay. yes, yes. Uh, doctor. Question? Uh, yes. Uh, from ten to thirty, I didn't quite get that. Can you please explain okay. it? Uh, from ten to thirty. So what happens is the following. So uh, at, at this point, so let's focus on this uh, on this plot. So from a ten, uh, the voltage will change the polarity, right? It was positive, then it will become negative, so? Yes. Okay, so what happens here is the following. Uh, it was positive, then at t equals to 10 seconds, 10 milliseconds, it will change to negative, so? Yes. So, Everything we have here is constant, or the voltage is constant, which is equal uh, to which is equal to uh, negative eight. Oh. So you take this portion and multiply it by negative eight. So if you if you take this line and multiply it by negative, so you're basically flipping it this way. Oh, okay, 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 good. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Rahim. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, question or? Uh... No, I want to put it. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, this interval will be from forty to sixty, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Go ahead. Good. So what happens at forty? It will uh, go to two. It at 40, it will be something like this. So it will start at negative 2. Because again here, this is just like the voltage is just the scaling factor. The shape is somehow similar to the current uh, shape. So it will be negative two. Then it will uh, reach at 60, it will reach positive two. So it's going to be something like this. Okay, very good. Uh, Ahmed Al Jishi. I would like to participate. Yes, sir. In the next. Yes. Uh, it, sure. it should be from 60 to 80. It should be zeros because the voltage starts from zero and then to, to zero. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Okay. That's how we plot it. Uh, it's much simpler than actually deriving the equation. Uh, every time I'm trying to to plot this uh, this equation. Yes, yes, sir. Question. Uh, 
Yes, uh, Doctor. Um, this question we had like the voltage. Um, they are all constants. What if we had two different uh, like very varying plots, not constants? Uh, you probably, yeah, you probably need to write the equations, but most likely you will not be asked this question. Okay, thank you. The second part is asking us to calculate the energy delivered to the circuit element at t equals to zero, uh, t equals to uh, 10 and 30 milliseconds. Uh, so I'm looking for new names. Okay, Abdel Kareem. So, uh, yes, doctor. Yes, yes. So, uh, and uh, I know that the relative of energy of the request from is. Okay. Is, I wanted, I solved it by deriving the equations like the book did. Oh, okay. Uh, can you solve it using the figure? I should, uh, yes, I should be. Yeah, can you do it now? The, I should just, no, I don't know because I don't yeah. I did. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. Uh, so who else wants to, uh, the, looking for a new, uh, yes. Dela, muted. Ahmed uh, Abdel Aziz. Yes. Ahmed. Yes. Ah, uh, what's his name? Swed. Swed. Yeah, Ahmed. I think I think the area under the curve from ten to thirty. Yes, it's the area under the curve from 0 to 10. Because first we're asked to find it at, at t equals to 2 milliseconds, then at t equals to 30 milliseconds. The area will be 1 half 10 multiplied by uh, 2. which is uh, 10 joules at t equals to 30 milliseconds however what will be the energy the aziz al medani yes doctor yes what so will be the energy yes the energy dissipated will be uh, the sum of uh, uh, the areas of uh, the under the curves. Okay, which is what? Two equals to 30. Uh, not really. Because you can see here, uh, this area is positive, this area is negative, and this area is positive. So you will end up uh, positive. With the... Yes, you will end so up. It will be the same then. It will be the same, yes. Okay. Very good. Uh, okay, so we're done with the second exercise. So let's move on to uh, the next part of the lecture. And the next part is actually we're going to start the second chapter, chapter two. And in chapter two, we're going to continue talking about some of the fundamental concepts, some of the fundamental laws. But it's very important to introduce the notion of uh, electric sources. Uh, electric sources are devices that's actually capable of converting non-electric energy to electric energy. Uh, for example, a battery. A battery converts chemical energy to electric energy or an electric energy to non-electric energy. For example, a motor. A motor is converting an electric energy to mechanical energy. Uh, so this is the, the general definition of sources. And among these sources, there are some ideal voltage source and ideal current source. So what do we mean by ideal voltage source? First of all, it's ideal, so it doesn't exist in reality, uh, <clears throat> unfortunately. 
So an ideal voltage source is a circuit element that maintains constant voltage between its two, its two terminals, no matter what uh, the current is flowing uh, between these two terminals. Uh, meaning that if I tell you that if you have an ideal battery, then uh, the voltage across the battery, or the voltage of the battery, say like 10 volt, it's going to stay 10 volt whether you connect it to, uh, uh, say, like a, a phone or something, or you connect it to a house. So it's going to be exactly 10 volt. In reality, this is not the case. Another ideal uh, source is called ideal current source, and the ideal current source will maintain constant current regardless of the voltage across its term. So if you have an ideal current source, the current source will have, would say like 10 ampere. The current source will always have 10 ampere. The current of that current source will be always 10 ampere, no matter what the value of the, uh, of the voltage across its term. Uh, it's very important that uh, to note that sources can actually deliver or absorb electric energy. Uh, we, we, we had an example last time. We said, like, if, if you are trying to charge a battery from a battery, then the battery that's being charged is actually absorbing electric power, and the battery that actually is charging is actually delivering electric power. It's exactly the same. Uh, they are exactly the same devices, but one of them is absorbing, one of them is, is actually a delivery. And the final thing is sources are active elements. Active elements usually generate electric energy, or active elements generate electric energy. Uh, comparing them to passive elements, passive elements they do not uh, generate energy, they actually, uh, they actually uh, uh, dissipate energy. So for passive elements, the dissipate energy or dissipate power. So this just like an introduction about sources, and uh, like I said, we have two types, uh, and we have two general types, voltage sources and current sources. First of all, voltage sources, they, are, they, they exist in nature, so you can have a voltage source. As an example for that is a battery. But in reality, you cannot have, in practice, you don't have a current source. So we need to kind of like emulate a current source. To do. And we said one class of the voltage sources and current sources is called uh, ideal voltage source and ideal current source. Yes, I'm the Kareem. Uh, doctor, uh, if I made the resistance zero, is it possible to have like an ideal? If I made the resistance zero, yes, would the uh, the current would be ideal. Uh, no, no, it's it's. I mean, what I when we said like ideal is the the definition. Okay, going back to your question, are you referring to the fact that there's no current source exists in nature, or? No, no uh, I thought of, because I know voltage equals R multiplied by I, so I thought if I made R zero, should not be part of the ideal. That's what came to my mind. Oh, yeah. Uh, w w what you're talking about is, is the fact that you have a short circuit, so there, there is no power dissipated within that energy. But for, for an ideal voltage or ideal current source, uh, it's it's very important that you maintain the same value no matter what. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, like I said, we defined uh, we divide the sources into two types: voltage and current. And one one important class of those is the ideal voltage and current sources. So let's further divide. Uh, the ideal sources into two types. There's independent sources, and there's uh, there are independent sources and there are uh, dependent sources. For independent sources, we have fixed current or fixed voltage, 
uh, no matter what. So the voltage will be fixed, no matter what. You have a battery of 10 volts, and that battery of 10 volts will be will be uh, will be uh, 10 volt, independent on uh, whatever value of the uh, independent of independent of the circuit itself. And the symbol for that is this is the symbol for independent voltage source, and this is the symbol for uh, independent current source. Yes, the yeah. So independent is ideal. Uh, no. It's one of the ID sources is something called independent. OK. Another class is called dependent sources. Yes, Ahmed. Ahmed. Doctor, what's the difference between them? Between what? Between independent and dependent. OK. Uh, but the independent sources is something like, first of all, they're naturally there. There's some limitation where this behavior is 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 uh, exists. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing is actually uh, the uh, uh, the other thing is independent sources. You see now that the First of all, independent sources, they are actually, they exist, they, they exist in nature, independent voltage sources. Uh, dependent sources, uh, they kind of like, the behavior is or like, uh, they're kind of like fictitious sources. They're not exactly, uh, or let's say, they kind of like a modeled sources. They're kind, of, you didn't have like a dependent source usually. It's, you will have an independent source plus some other components, and these components are modeled as dependent source. So uh, for, for dependent faulted sources, we have uh, two types. First of all, the dependent sources, they depend on the voltage or the current in any part of the circuit. Uh, for for example, here if we have a dependent voltage source, the dependent voltage source could depend on the voltage Vx, which is uh, in this case Vx could be any part of the circuit. We will we'll have an example of that, and uh, the voltage across any uh, the voltage across any part of the circuit, uh, and it could depend in the current as well. Uh, Ix is the current that exists in any part of the circuit. So mu here is constant, and in this case is unitless, or sometimes it's false bare false. P uh, or not P uh, rho here is constant, and it's actually the unit is voltage bare on there. So this is a dependent voltage source. A dependent current source has exactly the same structure itself, but instead of being a voltage source, it's actually a current source, and it could depend on the voltage in any part of the circuit, or a current, it can depend on the current in any part of the circuit. Um, okay, for alpha here is constant. The unit is ampere per volt, and beta here is actually constant and unitless. Yes, Ibrahim. Uh, so, Doctor, uh, are the dependent sources uh, ideal? Yes. As long as the Ix here is constant, they will generate the same current or voltage. Okay, so let's take an example. Uh, 
let's think about these independent voltage and current sources. We stated that um, the independent voltage source has a constant voltage between its two terminals, no matter what, uh, what the voltage in any other part of the circuit. Independent current source has a constant current source, has a constant current no matter what, uh, no matter what the voltage between its two terminals. So we want to see if the connections here make sense or not. Uh, Hassan, good. Uh, yes. Um, uh, so do do you want me to say which one is, uh, uh, is a valid or invalid? Yes. Okay, A is uh, valid because both uh, sources are equal, and so yes. does uh, B. Exactly. And so is B. Uh, uh, e, uh, e is okay. <laughs> Uh, who, who else wants to participate? Uh, Hassan, you participated. I'm looking for new names. Mehsan? Okay. The question is, we're looking into the connections here. And we want to state whether this, con whether this connection is permissible or not. And if this is... Uh, uh, Based on the fact that we know that if, if we have a voltage source, uh, independent voltage source, then between its two terminals, the voltage must be constant. Uh, so, Mehsan? Yes, uh, C? C, yes. Please. Uh, it is not valid because the positive is just one. Yes, exactly. C is not valid. And uh, pay attention here. Because between A and B, you have a voltage source with 10 volts, and at the same time, you have a voltage source at 5 volts. So, in order to, uh, for because those are ideal sources, ideal independent sources, uh, you must, between, uh, if you connect them between, uh, if you connect them, if you want to measure the voltage, between A and B, it must be equal to the voltage uh, of the value of the voltage source. So if you are ignoring this part, you would see a five volt between A and B. If you are ignoring the other part, you will see a 10 volt between A and B, which makes a contradicting uh, argument here. And this connection is not valid. Okay, Dr. Uh, can't we... Uh add them together then count the, the voltage between a and b no because they are in parallel here if they are in parallel uh, they must have the same voltage uh, okay uh abdullah al jiri yes yes uh, for d it is not valid why because the currents are not the same one is five and one is two Yes, exactly. D is not valid because if you if the, the current here it says that the current passing here is five, then all of a sudden here it's two. Remember, current is based on charges and charges are conserved, and uh, the fact that we have an ideal current source makes it impossible to to have this connection. Very good. Uh, e, let's say, Talal. Uh, yes, I think E is uh, valid. Why? Uh, because one part has a 5 ampere current, and the yes. other part has 10 volt voltage. Okay, so. yes, makes sense. Uh, the thing is, like here, if you remember the definition of an ideal voltage source, is a voltage source that has a constant voltage no matter what the current is. So, uh, so, so either way, the voltage is, is uh, constant. Exactly. The current source is uh, the same. It's uh, uh, it's uh, an ideal source is 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 an ideal current source is a current source that maintains constant current 
no matter what the uh, what the voltage between the two terminals. So the current will be constant. The voltage between the terminals is negative 10. Yeah. And here the voltage is constant. The current between the terminals is 5 amperes. OK, so E is, is valid. OK, let's uh, let's see how we define actually how how we include uh, circuits, how we include uh, dependent sources and the analysis of circuits. Yes, yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask about figure E. Is it uh, OK to say that it's constant without knowing how it look like in other part of the circuit? Uh, this is uh, all part of the circuit. This is the entire circuit. Yes, but I mean if uh, what's the voltage uh, before B between B and A, but in the other side. Uh, as long as we're not connecting uh, source here that's different from 10 we should be fine oh okay okay for this exercise we uh, are asked to find the value of pg uh, for the connection to be to be valid so looking here into this figure we can see that for vg to be valid for the connection to be valid, Vg, the value of the independent voltage source, must be equal to the value of the dependent voltage source. Why? They are connected in parallel. So let's try to find Vg here. And let's try to solve it. Who wants to uh, jump and solve it? I'm looking for new names. Okay, same suspects. Always has a science. Yes, doctor. Yes, the VG will be two. Uh, okay, let's. When I ask you to 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 solve things, uh, I I would appreciate if you can walk me through the way you solve it, not yes. just giving me the final answer. Yes, it let's try to solve. So what's the first step in finding VG? It says in parallel, so it will be IB over 4 equal to the VG. Okay, so VG will be, okay, IB divided by 4. So what is yeah. IB here? IB is 8. Why is, why is 8? Negative 8. IB is negative 8, okay. Yeah. Over four. So the then VG will be what? Minus eight over four. Minus eight divided by four. Would be minus two. Minus two. So VG is minus two volts. Good. The second part is asking us to find the bar associated with the eight and their source. Yes. Uh, if the sign are uh, refers uh, plus uh, and the minus will be uh, the uh, the uh, the minus the voltage PG equal minus uh, uh, in the dependent. No, the they, have, they, ha they have to be the same. They have to because they are connected in parallel, so they ha they must have the same value and the same sign as well. If the signs are opposite of the VG and the dependent source. The so you mean this one is positive, this one negative. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, yes, in this case, uh, VG will be uh, will be positive. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think Ali wanted to see if Sani let me see. Okay, yes, Ali. Ali Talu. Yes, uh, it is minus 16. Uh, minus 2 multiplied by 8. Okay, so let's let's see how how, how do you arrive to this conclusion? So this is a circuit and we have 
minus two volts. We have eight amperes. So are uh, you saying it's minus 16 watts, right? Yes. OK, exactly. This is correct. And let's let's write down why this is correct. So if we use passive sign function. P will be V multiplied by I, right? Right. OK. So uh, what is so here V is according to the best of science information. It is minus. The current is flowing from the positive. The higher potential to the lower potential, so we choose the positive side here. And V is what? V is negative, right? Right. Multiplied by eight, which is positive, so it's minus 16 watts. So this implies since P is less than zero, so in this case, the source is what? Generating power. Yes, delivering or generating power. Generate thing. Doctor. Yes. The current. Mo the expected that the positive will be under the sum. The current is entering from the positive here to the negative. No, no, no. The the positive is. We're talking about the voltage across the current source. So this is actually uh, oh, okay. so the, the the sign here is for the voltage, not for the current. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other question? Ahmed al Nafi, is it you? Or? Okay. Nothing. Okay. Bye. Okay, uh, so now we're going to start a very important, very critical, very fundamental, uh, very fundamental part of this course, which is Ohm's law. So Ohm's law is, is one of the Three fundamental uh, concepts that that we're going to heavily utilize in this course. It's going to be Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, and Kirchhoff's current law. So starting with Ohm's law here. So this before actually before um, defining Ohm's law, uh, let's talk about resistance in general. So what we want from usually what we want from materials is we want to make sure that they will be able to uh, they will be able to uh, permit the flow of current flow of charges. But some materials or all materials in general, with probably exception of superconductors, uh, they kind of like resist or impede the flow of charges. Some materials, they have the uh, ability to, uh, I mean, the, this capacity or this ability to resist uh, the flow of charges is higher than other materials. And for that reason, we have, in general, we have three classes of materials. So we have We have insulators. We have conductors. And we have something called semiconductors.
So the ability or the capacity of the material to impede or to resist uh, the, uh, the flow of charges is called the resistance, which is again here, this is the definition for that. And the circuit element, the circuit element or the circuit model that we use to model this property of the material is called resistor. Uh, usually it's uh, the symbol for that is R. So for insulators, insulators tend to uh, have high resistance, so they will resist, and you should should be insulators. We should insulate uh, insulate the uh, the flow of the insulate the electric current here. So R should be much much greater than one. For conductor, usually R is much much less than one. Conductors they will they should, they have three electrons. And from this, uh, they have three electrons, so these three electrons can contribute significantly to, to the current. Semiconductors, there's something in the middle. Uh, you can tune them to be uh, an insulator, or you can tune them to be a conductor. So they kind of like they have this flexibility of being a conductor and being an insulator at the same time with the modification of uh, adding some impurity to uh, to these uh, semiconductors and uh, applying uh, different uh, polarities of the current and the voltage of the voltage. That's why you see that conductors, semiconductors are very important. Uh, or they are the building blocks for uh, all electronics devices because of this ability to to control the conductivity of the materials. So going back to metals, for example, uh, metal e exhibit uh, low resistance, so that's why they're used uh, as a good conductor. So if you have a wire, the wire is usually made of cover, and that cover is has very low, res uh, very very low resistance, and that's why we use it to connect elements. Uh, cables, uh, the power lines are made of the same uh, the same structure or made of metals so the resistance usually for those is is very small and we can fairly assume that the resistance is zero but if you go to the lab and you take a piece of uh, wire and try to measure it with a precise uh, equipment you will see that the resistance is not zero you have very small resistance uh, this is actually a function of frequency. Uh, if you go up in frequency, uh, the material will be some materials. They are insulator uh, or they are conductor at very uh, low frequencies. Uh, actually, the opposite. They are insulator at very low frequencies, and they are uh, they are conductor at very low frequencies, and they are insulator at very high frequencies, and vice versa. The unit for resistance is ohms, uh, and the symbol for that is the circuit diagram for resistance is, is this one, a wiggle line, with, uh, a two terminal with, uh, with wiggle lines. Any question? Yes, Ahmed. Uh, Doctor, I'd like to ask you a general question. Uh, is the high temperature that exerted from the the wire when when the current is passing through it? Is this is this high temperature a kind of uh, resistance? Uh, the high the high temperature is caused by the fact that when you have high current. Uh, <clears throat> electrons tend to 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 uh, have higher momentum. They start to collide with one another, and this will generate heat. There is some 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 point here where your your wire will will, will break, so it will not be will heat up and will uh, will fire. Uh -huh. Thanks. Okay, uh, we have one minute. 
and we cannot start. Okay, we'll start talking about Ohm's law, inshallah, in the next lecture, and we'll introduce uh, Kirchhoff's law uh, if, if we have time. And uh, okay, today it's Tuesday, so we have two more lectures. Okay, very good. Uh, so thank you all very much. Uh, we'll see you inshallah next uh, class. Uh...